Welcome to What's Cooking, New Alm. I'm Rebecca Fleiser, the dietitian with the Heart's Beat Back, Heart of New Alm Project, working to reduce and eventually eliminate heart attacks in the 56073 zip code. And today we have a repeat guest. Hi, Dee. Thanks Hi. for coming in. Thank you. You know, we always find you have some great recipes that we've really enjoyed, and it looks like you're going to have another great one tonight. So tell us a little bit about what you brought in and uh, what, what uh, it's going to take to make it. We're going to do butternut squash soup. Really okay. easy, really fast. Um, <laughs> And just because it's seasonal right now, a lot of people have squash. It is. And you know, now at this time of the year, everybody's starting to get a little cold. It's nice to have a really great soup. And mm -hmm. you know, I always notice too, when we're having our vegetable-based soups, these are going to keep a little bit longer than if you have a meat product. So um, this is something that you could freeze and keep and, and heat up many times. So um, I'm excited to see it. I love squash and butternut squash is definitely, this is the right mm -hmm. time of the year for it. So, you bet. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at your ingredients and what we're going to make. Okay, so we start off with just the squash, and you're just going to cut this in half. Just roast it for an hour, so I don't know. A lot of people have made squash. Yeah, so this is actually the butternut squash. You'll find other things like acorn squash and uh, spaghetti squash, but uh, this one is going to be high in fiber, and it's a good choice to use this as a substitute for your potatoes um, on your table. So there you go. Yes. Okay, so then you just want to clean out the seeds. Okay. This does fall in the same group as a pumpkin, so you're going to notice it smells the same as a pumpkin, and you're going to uh, treat it the same. We're going to get out all the seeds and the, the inside there. Keep that cleaned out. Okay. And it can be a little tricky. But just get it as cleaned out as you can. No big deal, because basically everything goes in a blender. Okay. Okay. Just want to get the seeds out. So then we'll throw it in the oven. Um, I usually do about 400. Okay. For 45 to an hour. And what is it that we're looking for? How are we going to know when that's done? Well, until it's tender, like when you touch it in the thickest part with a fork and okay. the fork goes through. Then, then we know then we're good. Then it's done. It's soft. Okay. All right. So that's the first part. And about, uh, so we'll, we'll see, we did go ahead and bake that off for an hour, but about how many servings do you think this is going to put together? So what can we expect from one butternut squash? You can expect about, I don't know, I would just say a batch of soup. Okay, okay. You know, um, four to six servings for sure. Great. I do notice that as well when we replace our potatoes. Um, our mash, instead of mashed potatoes, we'll have some mashed squash. And you know, you really do get a good yield out of just one of these vegetables. So it is a, definitely a good choice. It's um, a low cost option and very high in fiber. So much better than our potatoes. So, all right, so what are we gonna do next? We've got this all cleaned out. You can see we did leave the meaty part of the squash in here. And that's going in the hour, in the oven for an hour, right? Mm -hmm, we'll say an hour. All right, and then what's up next? Okay, then we have our finished squash. Which got nice and golden. <laughs> it's real pretty. And so we're just going to scoop it out. Okay. And then put it into a food processor or a blender if you don't have a food processor. So we see that <clears throat> there is natural sugar in our squash. That is that uh, kind of caramelization on the top. Uh, but that really scoops out pretty easily. It looks almost like, like sherbet or some ice cream. It's a beautiful color. Yeah. Remember, as we talk about the Mediterranean diet, we do ask you to vary the colors in your diet. So um, this does fall into that nice yellow or orange group. It's going to have a lot of extra um, flavonoids in that, and it's going to have very high um, vitamin A. So a good choice for those as well. So good food to incorporate in. And it looks like autumn. Yeah, it sure does. In a bowl. <laughs> there you go. OK, so just scoop all of it up. This is really good to do if you've had leftover squash from the night before, too. Okay. This is also an easy way if you, uh, instead of having to boil and chop your um, squash, you can just bake it off like this. It does make a nice mashed potato um, consistency as well. As we go into the holidays, we are looking for these meals that are going to be a little bit quick and yet filling when you're out doing your shopping, if you're trying to prepare for your family. And really, as we visited about this, Dee, this is only uh, going to take us about 10 minutes, Yeah, huh? not very long at all, especially if you have it made up already. Yeah. So now, where did you come up with this recipe? I came up with this one just last fall for a party because I wanted to use things that were in season. Okay. And squash was quite abundant. And it's just good. It's basic, and it's 
yummy. There's not a whole lot of ingredients. Okay. Okay. Simple. Okay. So then we're going to do, well, we'll start, we'll say two cups of chicken broth, but you may not use that much. Right. Um, and okay. So we'll try to put this thing back on here. There you go. Now, if you are watching your sodium, you can go to it. We are using the reduced sodium um, chicken broth. Although you can go ahead and reduce that, use less sodium uh, chicken broth and go with the water as well. This does still meet our heart healthy guidelines, but if you want to go for even, uh, further restriction, you can make that change as well. What kind of texture or te consistency, consistency are we looking for right now? We're looking just to get it real smooth. And I would go until you have a nice liquid puree because you want to just strain it. Okay. Okay. And just keep adding a little bit of stock at a time. Yeah, that's coming out nice. Now you can see that this is basically just all vegetable. This is a great way to get those fruits and vegetables into your diet. We're looking for those five to seven servings per day for our Mediterranean diet, as well as meeting the guidelines for our, our health screenings and for the heart of New Alm. Because the squash is already hot, this is gonna be ready to go as soon as we're done with the blender. If you want this meal to wait for later, you can go ahead and add it into the pot and put it on the stove. But this is already, we can see it's steaming and it's a, you know, it could be served right away. It can. So we've added about two cups of stock. And there we go. This is the color of our soup so far. It's so pretty. Yeah, that is great. So it is. We're going to dump this into, you can put this in a crock pot too. Um, if you want to let it sit all day on low. Okay. So we're just going to get our puree in there. So this texture is still fa fairly consistent. We're still fairly thick, and so we have some other things we'll still add. Right. All right. I think we might add just a little bit of water. We're going to add um, some reduced fat or fat-free half and half. And just a little bit. That is actually something, too, that you can leave out. And, um, or on the side, and people can do that individually. Now, she did just mention the fat-free half and half. It does have a great flavor, a little bit thicker than a milk, and yet it does not have any fat, and is also uh, saturated, no saturated fat and no cholesterol. So uh, a great addition to your diet if you're looking to make these a little bit thicker in your soups and don't want to use milk. Do look for that fat-free half and half at your grocer. Okay, next I'm going to add just a bunch of sage. Okay. And we're going to take this out later so you can throw it in just like that. Oh, okay. And the, our half and half. So that sage will just uh, heat up, add its flavor, mm -hmm. and then we're going to take it back off. Right. And then we're going to also do that with a cinnamon stick. Okay. And this is great. And the longer this sits, the better. So we're just going to stir this up. And stir that sage right in there. Huh. Interesting. And it'll all come out yeah. as you put the whole sprig in. Yeah, it definitely has a distinct smell. Sage is very, uh, very, very distinct. If you haven't cooked with sage before, you will want to give that a try. See what you think uh, before using too much of it. You might find that you really enjoy it and add a little more. So. Okay, so this is the consistency of our soup so far. Okay. And we're going to add just a little bit, I think, of water. Okay. And you know, you can make this to whatever consist consistency you like. So, um, you know, this is going to be heated. If you're going to add it in your crock pot, you do want to add that extra water in there. If you're going to eat it right away and you enjoy a, a thicker, more full soup, you can leave it the way it was um, before we added the water as well. Okay, so then we just put it, bring it over to our stove. Okay. And I would just put this on low. We're going to put this on low. Thank you. And we'll let it sit for really as long as it takes for you to be ready to eat this. Okay. And then otherwise, let it sit in a crock pot, and the longer it sits, the better. All right. And you said at least an hour is what you're looking for for that sage, and then at the end, we're going to pull that out, correct? Yes, for sure. Pull the sage and the cinnamon stick out. Okay, pull those out. And the cinnamon stick will just impart a little bit of sweetness. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That sounds great. 
Now we, we uh, always are looking at what we can pair that with. And so we did have some, we have some French bread or baguettes. What else would you serve with your soup? Mm, I don't know. I would like to make crackers. Okay. Homemade crackers. Homemade crackers. Little fun things to make. Great. Um, or a little mini grilled cheese. Oh, that would be great too. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect on a cold day. Well, this is a great recipe. I'm looking forward to giving this a try. And, you know, if you look at the uh, start to finish time, this is one of our quicker recipes. Easy to make and yet very high in nutrients. Using that squash that maybe is readily available in your area and something that we can whip up on, on a cold night. So I sure appreciate this recipe, and I'm excited to give it a try. Thanks Thank for coming you. today, Dee. Thanks. Well, that's it for this week's episode of What's Cooking, New All. I'll see you next week. Welcome to today's Fit and Five. You know, all of us like to sit down and relax and watch a TV show with our family or, or alone, even now and again. Uh, but if you're like me, it can be kind of hard sometimes to actually sit and watch without doing something else at the same time. Well, what better way to get some physical activity in than while watching one of your favorite TV shows? Over the course of the next couple of segments, we're going to talk about how we can incorporate physical activity into our routine while we are, or into our day, while we're actually watching our favorite TV program. Today, we're going to go ahead and start with upper body. We've talked in past times before about how you can add resistance to your workout. And I've told you a little bit about using water jugs filled with um, varying do, uh, amounts of water for resistance. But today, I actually have some canned goods with me. And 99.9% .9 of us are going to have these in our cupboard. We're going to have big cans or small cans. So we can use varying weights um, for varying resistance for our exercises. So like I said, today we're going to start with upper body. We can do these activities standing, or we can also do them sitting. And I have with me also a chair today, so I'll show you a couple different ways to do these. We want to start by doing a basic bicep curl. So I'm going to take my cans or my resistance here and just put them to the side. I'm going to stand up nice and tall. My elbows are going to be in nice and tight. And I'm just going to curl the cans about 12 times. And then, then I'm going to take about a 30 second rest and I'm going to do the same thing again. Now, if I find these cans are a little light, I can go get heavier cans or again, I can break out my milk jugs. If I want to do these seated, very simply, we just sit in a chair. We're going to sit up nice and tall at the edge of the chair so the arms are out of the way. And we're going to do our bicep curl this way. You can do one arm and then the other. So there's a variety of different ways to do this. Well, because we did the biceps or the front of the arms, we always want to do the triceps. That's what we call opposing muscle groups. So the triceps are the opposing muscle group to the biceps, so it's really important for balance that we do um, both muscle groups. So for triceps, what we can do is I can actually put both my soup cans in one hand. I can bring my arm into the side, and then I can extend back and in with the arm. And you want to make sure to notice that my elbow's in nice and tight. And I'm only moving from the elbow down. So my whole arm isn't going back. I'm actually extending it back and in. Now, if you have pretty good flexibility in your arms, you can also do these over the head. So you bring the elbows into the ear and you extend up and down. So it would be the same thing. You're going to do these about 12 times, take about a 30-second break, and then do another set. Now, if I want to do these in my chair, I can actually use my chair for my resistance. As long as I have a good sturdy chair and not a folding chair or something that can collapse underneath me, I'm going to set my soup cans down, or my food cans down, and I can come to the edge of the chair and sit off the edge and actually dip down and up. So it's going to work the same muscle group, just in a little bit different way. So that's another way to work the triceps or the back of the arm. Uh, the last thing we're going to work for upper body today is going to be the shoulders. And there's all different kinds of exercises for the shoulders. So again, we can stand, we can bring the um, cans to the side, and we can just do a lateral raise up and down. So this is called a lateral shoulder raise. We want to make sure that the elbows stay soft, we don't lock them, and that we're lifting up no farther than shoulder height. We really don't want to come clear up here, we just want to prevent some type of shoulder impingement. So we're going to come up shoulder level and down. Now if I want to sit, you know, it's going to be kind of hard to lift to the side. I can do a different exercise where I'm seated 
and my arms are here and I'm going to press straight up and then come right back down again and press straight up and back down. Same thing, we're going to do about 12 of those. Take a 30 second break and then go back again. If you do about two or three sets of these exercises, you're going to feel a lot of strength and flexibility in the muscles and groups of your upper body. For today's Fit and Five, I'm Holly. Have a great day.